Hey everyone, and thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create dynamic charts in uh, Microsoft Excel, and specifically dynamic charts for real estate financial modeling in Excel. Now, here I have opened my apartment development model, and on the summary tab, down below under the property level cash flow section, I've dropped in three charts. This top chart is a uses chart that tracks total project cost by month. And you'll notice that it has a total length of 38 months. Then I have a sources chart with equity out in blue, debt out in green, but again, over a 38 month period. And then finally, I have this chart that tracks net operating income by month. And so we see as operation begins in month 19, and why it goes from negative to eventually positive kind of month 24 and uh, continues to be positive through the end of the analysis period, month 38. However, what happens if we were to change the analysis period, let's say to 48 months? Well, watch what happens to these charts. They go from 38 to 48, month, 48 months uh, dynamically. Let's go to 24. Likewise, the chart automatically adjusts to the length of the analysis period. So over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna show you how to do that yourself. So here I have just a very basic worksheet. Uh, I have a periods input where I can adjust between one and 12 periods. And I've built out a net operating income line that is dynamic to the number of periods that I enter in that uh, cell. So you see, if I go to six periods, it changes the uh, number of periods that uh, output NOI to six, we can go to nine, and then go back out to 12. And I wanna create something similar, but in a chart form. And so what I'm going to do actually is create a named range for whichever cells uh, within this NOI ra row uh, are visible. And to do that, I, I use a combination of an offset function and the named ranges functionality in Excel. So let's create a named range first. So we go to formulas, name manager, and we select new. We're gonna call this, I don't know, uh, range underscore NOI. And then it asks us to refer to a range. And for now, we're just gonna create a static range. I just select that button. I choose the entire range, right? Hit enter, okay. And now this range, if I select it again, it appears that range. And likewise, if we were to come and insert a chart, say there, and we were to select data, add, and let's just choose that range, you'll find now NOI 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 periods. Now let's imagine we then we come up here and we change it to six. Well, the problem is it does become dynamic in the sense that it reduces the number that are visualized, but periods seven through 12 continue to appear in the chart. And so we want those to disappear and for the chart to resize such that one is here at the far left and six, our last period is at the far right. And we do that by making that named range that we'd created dynamic to the length of that NOI row. And I do that by using an offset function. So offset sets a range uh, in Excel based on certain criteria. So we type in offset, open parentheses, and it first asks for a reference. And that is the first cell that is part of that range. I'll use an F4 to make that reference cell absolute. Then it asks, do we want to move away from that reference any number of rows up or down or any number of columns left or right? And so we do comma, how many rows up or down do we wanna move away from that reference cell? Well, none, so I enter zero. How many columns do we want to move away from that reference cell? Well, we want zero as well. Then it asks, what is the height of that range in terms of rows? Well, it's one, right? So we want it to be just one row tall. 
And then what's the width of that range? Well, here right now it's six, right? Uh, but sometimes it's 12 and sometimes it may be nine. And, and, and that is determined by the value in cell D3. So we select that and hit F4. Close parentheses and hit enter. So next we take this logic and we copy it with a control C. And we come back to our uh, formulas, name manager. We select this range that we created and we come down to refers to. We're gonna change that to that formula. Hit enter. And now the range refers to this offset function rather than referring directly to some static range. And you'll notice immediately it highlights just the section that the offset function calls out. And if we were to say, let's close that, let's go to nine, and then we were to open that back up here, you'll see now it's highlighting the entire range. So the last step then is to embed this range into the chart. So right now the chart is referring to just, let's come to select the chart, go to design, select data, currently edit the series. It's referring to a static range from E7 through P7. We want this to refer to that dynamic named range. So we come back and we delete everything except for the sheet we're in and an exclamation point. And then we type in the range, which if I recall right, was range underscore NOI. Hit OK. And now it, the data that it uses is that dynamic named range. Now come up here, hit six. The chart adjusts to only include the six values. Uh, let's go to four, go to 12, and so forth. And thus, we've created a dynamic chart in Excel. If you have any questions, please reach out. Otherwise, thanks for your time.